Good day, RGV. Today on Valley Por Vida, we're talking about a special illuminated drive through trick-or-treating experience. That's right, we'll be at South Texas Health System to learn all about how you and your family are invited to this very special event. Now, we've got info on National Bullying Prevention Month and tips for parents and teachers to keep in mind, plus how to keep your workspace innovative, what you can do to present new and creative project ideas to you and your coworkers. Now, there's a lot going on and we're breaking it all down. Valley Por Vida starts right now. Hi there, and thanks again for joining us today. I'm your host, Danielle Bonda. Well, bullying, either in person, person or social media, is an ongoing issue that affects students every single day, regardless of whether they're, le they're learning at home or they're in person. Students are at risk of being bullied, so in honor of National Bullying Prevention Month, we went ahead and spoke to an expert to learn how parents and teachers can identify signs of bullying and to learn about some steps on how we can prevent it. I'm the Lower Division Counseling Coordinator for Texas Connections Academy, which is an online, fully online, virtual Texas public school grades 3 through 12. I'm here to talk to you today about a very important topic of bullying in our school. The, the goal of National Bullying Prevention Month is to bring awareness to families and the community about bullying behaviors in our schools and how they affect our kids. And, and then in turn, how they affect the ability to learn, because that's what we're here for. We want our kids to learn and be successful. So bullying can, can have a negative effect on not just the person being bullied, bully, and students that are bystanders and witness bullying behaviors. So it's important that we're all aware of what some of those behaviors are and how they affect kids in the learning. And I would even point out that adults experience bullying as well. It's not just kids. Any age, any um, demographic group, any income group, it can happen to anyone. Anyone can be a bully and anyone can be a victim of a bully. And so uh, that's a very important point that, that people need to understand. Some typical things that we see, changes in a child's behavior, something that's out of the norm for that child. For example, if if your child is usually easygoing and happy-go-lucky, and then they start um, acting a little bit strong, that's beyond the norm for them. Or if they start sleeping more, a lot, like a lot more, they don't want to get out of bed. Or they start having headaches and stomach aches that just kind of come out of nowhere. You know, a, a stomach ache once or twice a year is, is not uncommon, but if it's something that happens over and over and over again and you start to notice a pattern that could be a, a tell about bullying and one of the number one things that we often see with kids that are being bullied is they start to withdraw from activities that they used to enjoy or they just don't want to go to school anymore so a child that used to just love to go to school suddenly is like I don't want to go I don't want to get out of bed I don't want to go I don't want to go to school could be a sign that maybe uh, that child is experiencing bullying. Right, so bullying definitely happens online. Our kids today spend a great deal of time online. And so not just um, because of the pandemic, I mean, kids had to do a lot of learning online, but they play games online. And it's kind of interesting to me to see how often students develop friendships online through like online gaming and other little social platforms. So they're very much into being online with one another. Now, now the thing is, the same bullying behaviors that you might see in a face-to-face -face, uh, situation will see uh, online. And oftentimes, it can be more insidious because for whatever reason, students or, or people in general are a lot more, um, it's like they're more willing to push the envelope to be mean in a, a virtual environment because you don't see them. You just you might, you might see their face on a camera, but oftentimes it's just through like a message and they get a little bit more bold. We hope parents and teachers can keep these tips in mind and share them with others in honor of National Bullying Prevention Month. And you can visit any of the websites on your screen if you'd like more information. 
All right, well, South Texas Children's Hospital just celebrated its 15 year anniversary this year, and each year their team hosts a, a children's fall fest. Now, of course, things looked a little different last year due to the pandemic, but they're back and you're invited to attend this year's drive through event. They're so happy to be partnering with Food Bank RGV and anyone who joins in on the fun is encouraged to bring five cans of food to donate. Now, the great thing here is that while the event will be held at Children's, all of their facilities will be participating, which means this is your chance for the kiddos to enjoy some candy, some treats, and lots of fun. Go ahead and check it out. Uh, so my name is Lance Ames. I'm the CEO at South Texas Health System Children's Hospital and South Texas Health System Edinburgh. Uh, we are so excited to be able to do the Fall Festival event, event again this year. Every year for the past decade, we've been able to pr um, provide this wonderful activity for all the families and children in our community at South Texas Health System Children's. And we're ready to have another exciting Halloween celebration. Uh, this year, we are inviting all of the families and kids from the Valley to come to our hospital. We're going to have a drive-through trick-or-treating event. And we wanted to make sure to do this event. We weren't able to do it last year. And so it's just going to be a nice way to um, allow everyone to come back in do some trick-or-treating from your car and just have a great time. You know, I think one of the best things that we do as a hospital is work together with the community. We want to be a major part of this community for years to come and having um, organizations like the RGV Food Bank are just amazing. And so we're inviting all the families this year to come in and to donate up to five cans uh, that will be able to help families in the RGV that are in need. Uh, we haven't had them here in the past, but we know that they're going to really be able to make this event a meaningful experience for everyone who comes. Everyone's welcome. We, uh, we want to make sure that everyone here, not just in Edinburgh, that the entire RGV, you're welcome to come to this event. It's time to be able to have some fun, um, be together as family, and uh, just get out and, and do what's number one, fun for kids, and two, great for the community with the RGV Food Bank uh, donation session that we're going to have. Uh, we, we always love to see our former patients and families. Uh, they really do become family with us when they're here in the hospital and uh, they're absolutely welcome to come. We want all former patients, all of our physicians, nurses, uh, everyone who really provides care in this medical community to come. And this year I, I'm excited to say that we are including several more pediatricians. Uh, we love our pediatricians and all that they do for our community as well. So uh, you'll see um, when you come by, several booths that have been decorated by our hospital departments, a lot of our nursing staff, some of our physicians, but then also we're bringing in a lot more community partners and pediatricians to be able to say hello to the kids and uh, just uh, contribute to the fun of the night. I'm Tom Kessinger, I'm the System Director of Marketing and Public Relations for South Texas Health System. Um, we're really excited about this year's Children's Fall Festival. In years past, we've done an in-person event where people were able to walk the grounds of the Children's Hospital and we had rides, we had games and all these fun booths. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we, were, we had to cancel at last year's event. And so we wanted to bring it back this year and we wanted to bring it back with a bang, but unfortunately COVID is still an issue in the community. So we decided to sort of retweak our program and, and create a, what we call an illuminated drive-through trick-or-treating experience. That means that families are gonna be able to drive on, onto the campus here at South Texas Health System Children's. They're gonna drive through the parking lot and they're gonna see booths that are decorated by all of our departments as well as members of the community and pediatri uh, pediatricians offices, um, some members of the city and, and things like that. They'll be able to drive through and, and basically we'll go to them and give them candy. So the kids don't even have to get out of the car. Parents can just drive slowly through and collect, but they'll get to see a, a real cool experience. So we're really excited to be able to do something that has never been done before. So this is a real community effort. So we're really excited because um, in years past, we have had all of our departments involved. So it's not just South Texas Health System Children's. We have 11 facilities that make up South Texas Health System. So South Texas Health System McAllen is gonna have a booth that's um, Greece themed. Then we're gonna have the Behavioral Hospital that's doing 101 Dalmatians. We have the Heart Hospital. We don't know exactly what they're doing yet, but everyone is gonna have a cool theme. Everyone's gonna be decorated. Um, and, and dress up to really highlight that theme. And then so the, the families will get to basically drive through and experience this entire Halloween um, event in a way that has never been done before. And we're really excited. We're um, also having a special illuminated trailer
trail. So the first about 20 feet of the, of the parade entrance are going to be like you're going into the woods and in transporting you into another sort of Halloween world. So we're really excited just about having them and we're excited about having the community involvement. RGV Food Bank is gonna be part of this event. We also have community organizations as well as pediatric clinics in the community that are gonna be taking part. It's a true community event and that's what we're most excited about is that we're ingrained in this community and we're part of it and we're here to give back and make this a fun, safe Halloween for children. Um, if you'd like to learn more about the Children's Fall Festival, you can visit the South Texas Health System um, Facebook page. We have an event page that is dedicated to the Children's Fall Festival. So just look down our events page and you'll be able to see information. We'll have updates, we'll have a map, and then we'll be sharing some, some sneak peeks at what we're going to be doing. And hopefully on the day of, we'll see you out there and, and we hope that the entire community comes out. We're expecting about 500 cars, but who knows? how many will actually come. We're excited, the more the merrier, and it'll be a, a great Halloween for all. Feel free to visit their Edinburgh location, check out their website, or log on to their social media event page for more information on the Children's Fall Fest. All right, well now it's time to take a commercial break, and then we've got to look at your local weather updates, but be sure to stay tuned because Valley Por Vida will be back, and we'll have info on the upcoming Medicare enrollment period, plus YouTube versus college, which is best for success for your business and why. Those details plus more when we come back. <laughs> 